Hey guys, just a couple of things before we get started on this. One is, uh, someone recently, when a video came up, just before the comment section disappeared, someone said, you, you chose to live in Japan, why are you always complaining about Japan? And a couple of other people responded to that person and said, well, these guys don't always complain about Japan. Usually it's quite positive, but they're just telling us a story. And that was basically it. You know, you guys know, all we try to do is show you anything and everything about Japan. And sometimes the stuff we show you happens to be positive, and sometimes, usually actually, if you look at most of our videos, probably 99% of them are positive, positive. and then occasionally we get one that's not. We don't stop to think whether it's positive or negative before we make the video. We know that on YouTube, positive videos are more popular. Of course, that sort of seems natural, doesn't it? Um, and, and particularly people who are really into Japan, some people who are really into Japan and really love Japan don't want to hear anything negative. So anything that we make that's a bit negative, people don't like it at all. But, too bad, <laughs> sorry. Because the way, the way we see it is it's, it's sort of, what we want to do is just show you anything and everything, you know? And, and a lot of people who've, who've watched the videos and then come to Japan will say, that you know, knowing that thing first was useful. You know, it's better than telling you it's all perfect, and then when people come here, go, "Hey, wait a minute! There's all this crappy stuff that no one told us about." You know, so so today's mission, because sometimes our missions are fun and exciting, and sometimes our missions are are not fun and exciting. Um, today's today's mission is um, you might have seen those of you who have been with us for a, for a long time would have seen the video explaining what a foreigner registration card is so um, and also about the immigration center we've made videos about both these things in the past right so what it is basically is it used to be called the gaijin card and then they the government found that that foreigners didn't like carrying a card called the gaijin card right um, so they, they renamed it to something else but it's still the same thing it's still the gaijin card and in fact a lot of uh, like real estate companies and employers and other people like that will still ask for the Gaijin card, right? So it's the same thing by a different name, basically. It's, it's called the foreign, foreign Resident Registration Card or something now, but it's basically just an ID card. And it's not a big deal. Some foreigners object to it, but um, Japanese people also have an ID card as well. So it, it's no different, really. Um, if you're a Japanese citizen, you have one type. If you're not a Japanese system, you have another type. Not unusual. Um, and you're supposed to carry it with you all the time when you're in Japan. So they usually issue it to people who are here on a, a visa for a period of time or a permanent residence, which is my case. I'm a per permanent resident or spouse visas or whatever, whatever other uh, status people have is registered on your card. So um, some of you might remember the stories from the... It's called the, uh, in this, the one we're going to is called the Nagoya Regional Immigration Bureau, right? So it's the Immigration Centre, uh, which is a part of the Department of Justice that administers all the immigration and visa stuff. And the one we're going to is huge because it does not just all of Aichi, but it does Gifu and Mie and somewhere else as well. So it's a really busy place and it's a horrible place. Those who've been with us for a long time would have remembered stories. From years ago, you know, when I first came to Japan, I was on a cultural visa, so I had to renew that every year. So every year I had to go to this horrible place and, and, and submit all these forms and and then go home and sweat, waiting to see if they were going to re renew my visa or not. And then finally a card had come, come saying that, you know, you come and collect your visa and you have to go back there again. So it's sort of in a, in a pretty inconvenient spot for us. And it's just a, something about the place is just horrible. You know, it's just the ground floor has, uh, uh, what do they call it, a help center or something, which is actually quite a good little place. It's a little, uh, it's a room with a counter and they, the people in there help you if you don't understand something or you need help with something. Those guys are just there to help you. So that's a really good thing. But on the other part of the, the first floor is where people voluntarily hand themselves in for overstaying their visa, right? And then directly behind that is the detention center, which is basically a jail. So that's sort of, having that, having that detent, detention center there really adds an atmosphere to that place. You know, it's like if you fail that test, 
<laughs> you're going to jail. All right? It's not that bad, but it feels like that. And just, just the atmosphere and the endless faffing and endless mucking around, and you know, it's just a pain. So, so I used to have to go there every year at least twice. Sometimes three times if I forgot something or if they wanted something else, I'd have to go get a letter from someone or something. Sometimes I had to go there three times every year and it was horrible. And then uh, eventually I got married and then I had a spouse visa. And when I applied for the spouse visa, I thought, right, this is the end of this nonsense. And they, applied, they I went and put, so they sent a card, said, come collect your spouse visa. So I turned up there to collect it and they'd given me a year, right? So what they do is, because a lot of people from some countries marry Japanese people just to get a residency in Japan, just to be able to live in Japan. And so their marriages are shams, right? So they only give you a year and then they, they contact all your family members and friends in Japan and check to see if your marriage is real. And then they give you another couple of years on your spouse visa, right? It's pretty insulting. If you are legitimate, it's pretty rude, you know? Um, but, you know, it's their system, so however they want to run it. Um, at that time, I decided I'd had enough of all that and I'd been here long enough anyway, so I applied for permanent residency and got it. So so when, when I got permanent residency, I was like, yeah, no more going to that zoo. So I shouldn't call it the zoo, but that's the feeling I get in there. You get all the foreigners all in there in the waiting area. and Just, I don't know, something about it hurting us all together and, you know... I don't know, it just has a zoo feeling about it, you know? So, so I was like, yeah, I don't have to go to that shithole. And, and recently I actually said to someone, I was talking to someone about the immigration center and said, oh, I don't have to go to that place anymore. You know, I don't have to go there anymore because I've got permanent residency. So I haven't been there in, I don't know, 10 years, more than 10 years, more than 10 years, 12 years, something like that since I've been there. You know, I don't go there anymore. Yay. And then, uh, the, my card, my, um, uh, what do I call it, foreigner, my Gaijin card came due for renewal again. Now the Gaijin card were being issued from our city hall. So you'd go to the counter at city hall uh, and, and fill out the form and give it to them. And I think they sent it to the immigration centre for you and then it came back and then you go and collect it from city hall, right? So when this thing, you know, the card came and said you've got to renew your, your foreigner card, it was like, yeah, no problem, okay, so got, got my passport and my old card and a couple other things. See the guy in front of us on the phone, Drew, oh, you can't, sorry, no front camera. So anyway, got the, got the, um, got my things together, went to City Hall, and, and the guy there at the counter's going, shh, shh, you know, and you know it's bad when they start doing that, shh, uh, and he went off and talked to some other guy, and they both stood there and went, shh, and then, then he came back and said, oh, no, you've got to go into Nagoya. You know, we can't do it here anymore. And, oh, no, I've got to go to the zoo. Got to go to the zoo. I don't want to go to the zoo. <laughs> so, uh, so, anyway, got on the internet and looked up the zoo. Because I wanted to check just to see if there's anything different during, because um, of COVID. And also to get the print off the form. And, uh, and sort of get ready, you know, because the more you can do before you go to the zoo, the better, you know, because the less amount of time you'll spend there. And I'd forgotten how bad it is. The website, something about Japanese websites um, for businesses or for government, they're, they're always a mess. They're always a confusing mess, you know, and, and this one's no exception. It's just a mess, you know, and trying to, the way they're laid out and they're just sort of, um, and it does have other languages. It's got English and Chinese and Korean and some other languages as well and Portuguese and you pick your language. But it's a whole bunch of Japanglish and then it's also, just the way it, it's laid out is illogical and you sort of get lost in it because you're trying to find your way around, in English, trying to find your way around. And it's like, all I'm trying to find is this form, you know, and you finally find the form and then, it, and then if you lose the page, you're gonna go back, you, you, you get lost again. It's just a mess. I don't know why, I don't know why, it's just something about the Japanese way of thinking or everything has to be complicated. You know, instead of simplifying it and making it really easy, user-friendly. User-friendly is something you just don't hear talked about in Japan. They just don't think about that. So the website's an absolute mess. So I finally found the form, got that, printed it off. It's full of Japanglish and it's in Japanese and English and it's full of Japanglish. And again, same, 
uh, what's that word when you've got something that's not clear? It's that same thing where, you know, for example, at the top there was a line and it said, it said, underneath the line it said family name and then it said given names. It's all right, so I wrote my name on that and then I looked next to it and it said nationality. Ah, oh, so this line was actually for nationality and the family name, given name was supposed to be the line that was considerably further below. You know, stuff like that, this is like, ah, oh, everyone that does this form must make that same mistake, you know? It's just everything about bureaucracy in Japan is like this. It's just frustrating. It leaves you wanting to tear your hair out, you know? So finally, all right, all right. And then you get the bottom of the form and it's got it's got a section there for people like proxies doing it for some, on the bar for someone else. But it's not really clear which parts are for the proxy and which parts are for the, the person. You know, just it's just... This is what it's like in, in, in Japan. Instead of someone saying, this is a mess, we need to tidy this up, everybody just accepts it. That's the form they've probably used for 30 years and nobody said, you know, everyone makes that mistake on that line, we need to fix that. It just stays a mess, you know? And this is what bureaucracy is like. And this is, before you go to this place, this is what you know it's gonna be like there today. You know, it's gonna be a mess. Which is why I'm making this video now because I'm not sure how much video I'm gonna be able to take in the place. I'll try and show you a bit of it. But I'm not sure how much I can actually take there and how much I'll be able to and how much I'll want to. So then, okay, so oh, what's the address? I haven't been there for a while. I'll get the address and I'll put it in the Navi. So I look in there and I find the address and I write it down and I go and put it in the Navi and the Navi goes, nah, don't know that one. What? So I go back and look on the website again and there's another address for the same place. <laughs> So there's two addresses on the website. One's correct and one's not correct. You know, so I get the other address, come put it in the Navi and it works. And it's like, uh, and you just know, every time you deal with, with organizations like this in Japan, with bureaucracies or with big companies or banks or post offices or anything, you just know this is what it's like. You know, from when you decide to do something to when you finally get it done, it's an endless amount of unnecessary faffing and ridiculousness <laughs> it's just crazy so look the reason for the video these videos it's not just bitching it's letting you know because what we found over the last however long how many years it's been 14 years or whatever is that that when we talk about these things sometimes what happens is you know uh, make a video like this a couple of years later somebody will say oh that video that you made about that was really helpful because when I went there I knew what to expect and that's sort of the main I mean partly these videos are entertainment for people who are interested in Japan you know and interested to hear what it's really like here but there is also a practical value there and and quite often we'll hear people say they that after watching our videos after watching our videos they decided to go to Japan um, or some people will say after watching our videos they decided not to go to Japan because they didn't think they could hack it. Um, other people will say that, that they went to Japan and our videos really helped them. So, you know, some of these will actually give you some advice. Other times it just gives you a head, heads up what to expect. You know, if you come and live in Japan and you have to go to one of these places, you've got to sort of build up your patience level first and allow lots of time. Right, because I mean, this this could take 30 minutes. It should take 30 minutes, but it probably won't. It'll probably take hours. And they close for lunch, these guys. And this is another strange thing. And you see this in a lot of organisations in Japan. Instead of instead of staggering their lunch breaks so that half the staff have their break at 12 o'clock and half have their break at one o'clock, what they'll do is everyone takes a break at the same time, and they just close. They just close. So if you go in there and they're busy. And you know, and the, there's a big board up. I might be able to show you. And you take a, 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 a ticket. Okay. So they, so you take a ticket, and then it says up on the board the number that the next person, you know. And sometimes you'll sit there for an hour waiting for your number to come up. And if that happens to overlap into the lunch lunch break, they just all disappear. So all the people are on the counter suddenly disappear and there's nobody on the counter anymore and you just sit there for an hour until the lunch break is finished and then they come back and then the numbers start moving again on the screen. And that's that's the way they do it. And that's considered normal here. Instead of saying, okay, well, look, half the people... And because bureaucracies like this, there's dozens of people behind the counter sitting at tables. And instead of just half take a break and half take a break later, 
you know, they all have to have a break at the same time. And and that's really common in Japan. You get that with bureaucracies, you get that with um, with like dentists and doctors and all those guys do it as well. You know, lunchtime, everybody disappears. I went into my dentist one day and I hadn't noticed the time and just sort of went in there to make an appointment and um, there was no one there. And the door was unlocked, just walked in up to the counter and there was no one around. Sumasan, Sumasan, no one around. They'd all gone off for lunch, you know. So anyway, I'll show you as much as I can. Um, I don't like waving cameras around the zoo, but I'll show you as much as I can and uh, give you a bit of idea what it's about anyway. Sorry we didn't have a front camera today. It wasn't sort of part of the plan. This wasn't supposed to be a long thing. This is supposed to be a short introduction. I got a bit carried away. What was that, about 15 minutes, was it? Anyway, here we go. Here we go, by magic. I've got to sit in the car for another, what's the Navi say, another 18 minutes at least. And that's the other thing, coming to the big city, you know, we live in the country, don't like coming to the city, so I've got to sit in the traffic for another 18 minutes before I get there, if I'm lucky. But you don't have to, I can click my fingers and we'll be there, you ready? Here we go, three, two, one. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, shanban desu ka? Hai, onegashimasu, sezumasu. Yeah, unnecessary faffing. <laughs> Goju sunburn. Okay, so I'm, we're driving past empty spaces, guys. Looking for 53. Unnecessary faffing. That was about the sixth guard man between the street and the, and the car park, too, by the way. Is there a reason that we have to park in a specific number? That's because that's the way they've always done it. There's 53. So I've got to park here and put the number on the dash. Unnecessary faffing. Number on the dash, that's wonderful. Oh, it begins. There's two guys handling that, two guardman handling that, uh, numbering the car park system. And there's another three up here handling the entrance. So guys, there's signs all over the place this time saying no cameras. So if you want to see this place better, telling me to stop because there's a red light, right? <laughs> so there is a video, there is a video, old video on the how-to playlist showing that place better. I showed you a little bit from the outside, a little bit from the inside, but there's signs everywhere now saying no cameras, which is a new, new addition. And when I actually took the outside video, uh, a little round gardeman lady um, came wobbling over <laughs> and said, Dame yo, dame yo. So, so <laughs> that's why I only showed you a little bit, a little bit of the place. But wait a minute, I'm just going to focus here a little bit. We got gardeman. There's a, there's a traffic light right here, right? So there's absolutely no need for these three guys. All they do is confuse the issue because you're sort of trying to watch them and the traffic light. But that's typical Japan anyway. So guys, I walked in. So we've got a red light, but the guard demand's saying go. I, I hate that. You've got to be so careful because sometimes the old guard demand make mistakes. So you've got to be really careful to listen to them but also watch out what else is happening because they can get you into trouble all right so well now he's telling me wrong info all right so walked in the front door 
um, and there was staff everywhere. These places always have way too many staff that don't do anything, that just stand around. So there's three or four staff right inside the door to get you to stop so that the automatic thing could take your temperature. And then, okay, off you go. And I looked at them and thought, why is there three or four of them, you know? It's, it, it was a one person, well, it was a sign. Again, those three or four people could have been replaced with a sign. Um, so then, okay, so I know where to go. So I went up to the first floor and, um, or the second floor, depending on what country you come from. Some countries it's the ground floor and then the first floor, right? So I went upstairs, went upstairs, and there's another person standing at the entrance to the, the big room that I showed you in, in the video. Um, and she says, I walk up, and she didn't ask what I was there for, and she just said to me, Ichiban. So the counters got from one to 12. So Ichiban, okay. So I went and stood in line at, in front of the, the number one sign and stood in line and waited and finally got to the front counter and the, the lady there took one look at the form that I'd already filled out. Oh, by the way, filling out the form before I went there was a really good idea because the place was busy and the counters where the forms and the people were filling out the forms was really busy too. So having the form already filled, it, filled out was a really good idea. I highly recommend that. So, so I got to the front, finally got to the front of Ichiban, number one, and the lady looked at it and said, oh, Juban des. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the first lady standing there just telling everybody to go to number one and then they get to the front and then that person tells them where they need to go, right? And then they get, they don't have to go and stand in front of number 10 and wait, wait in front of number 10. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I had to go and take a, a ticket from number 10 and then go sit down and wait until the number comes boing and then you get up and you, and you, you go up and, and put your stuff on the counter and, and, and then they take it and check it and pull down your mask and look at your picture and and then you go back and sit down and wait for your number to be called again. Um, but just there's something, I was, I was sitting there looking around thinking, what is it about this place that's so stressful? You know, the, the, it, it, what is it about this place that's so unpleasant? It, there's just something about it, uh, per, perhaps, and, and it depends on, the, on your personality, right? So the reason I'm telling you all this is that if you've got, if you mentally prepare for this before you come, it might make it less unpleasant for you, you know? Um, one thing probably is because I live in the country, in the countryside, um, driving around in the city is stressful in itself. So getting here and knowing I've got to get home again is a stressful thing because the, the traffic is just, it's not heavy today, but it's just the way everyone drives here is more aggressive and it's just, it's unpleasant, you know? So, uh, so that's probably part of it. And then it's just, it's just the atmosphere in there. You know, that there's a certain amount of tension because, you know, usually in bureaucracy in Japan, like for example, the post office, you know when you go to the post office, you often get the impression with these people that they're dealing with something for the first time. Or you want to post a parcel. Mmm, <sighs> you know, <laughs> like, like they've never heard about that before at their post office, you know? Oh, you want to send a parcel. Mmm, <sighs> you know? And, and you always get that feeling. But the worst thing that could possibly happen at the post office is for some reason you can't send your, your, your parcel. You know, that's about the worst thing that could happen, you know, with that bureaucracy. But with the, with the um, immigration center, the worst thing that could happen is you might have to leave Japan. So that wasn't really the, co the, the case for me today, but it has been many times in the past. Every time I got my cultural visa renewed when I first came to Japan, every year that was stressful wondering whether or not they're going to renew it and then it got it got less stressful with the spouse visa because it's less likely that you know they're not going to renew that one but but every time you know you get that feeling and so you're in a room with a bunch of people and you know there's lots of people in that room who are in that situation there's a real quiet tension in that room there's not a lot of laughing and having fun going on in that room there's a sort of a tension because there's there's no doubt a lot of people who are sitting there thinking you know, geez, I hope I get this visa and I hope it's all okay. And, and the other thing is, to a lesser extent, but also stressful too, is hoping everything that you've brought is enough. And because that often happens there, you know, you check the list of things that you're supposed to bring. There's a list, you know, on the internet that'll tell you you've got to bring this, this and this. You take all that and they say, did you bring your, it didn't happen to me today, but it's happened to me in the past. You know, did you bring a letter from your martial arts teacher, you know, for the cultural visa or did you bring something else that you didn't think of 
that they say, oh, did you bring that? Oh, yeah, you need that. You know, and then you got to go back home again and then get that thing and come back and go through the process again another day. You know, so there's that stress too. Is like, if I got it, if, is everything in order? Is everything okay? You know, so look, some of you guys might be way more mellow than this old man and you probably just find it entertaining. That's probably the best attitude. That probably is the best attitude. Treat the whole thing like an adventure. You know, a day out in the city. I shot a little bit of video around the place while I was coming here. So, you know, treat it like a day out and a bit of an adventure and then an and entertainment. But sitting in that room, I don't know, it's just something about, it's a real us, or them, us and them feeling because behind the counter, you've got the, the immigration department people with their uniforms and their badges. And, and you know, on, on our side of the counter, we've got all the foreigners and, and everybody's sort of, that's why I always think, feel like I'm in a zoo. It's that everybody's just, it's it's their, them and us. It's it's their team and our team. And I mean, this is probably just a, 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 a mental attitude, right? But that's the feeling. And you're trying to, trying to jump through these hurdles, you know, to, to be able to stay here. And, and, and also, I think probably too, when you've been here a long time, um, you know, I, I feel like this is my home and I've been here a long time and this is where my family and my home and everything is. I don't have anything in Japan, in Australia anymore except, you know, a couple of family members and a couple of friends and that's it. So, I feel like this is my home until I go to that place and then again I feel like I'm not part of it. I don't feel like I belong, you know, and and all those things, all those things combined, you know, um, and the atmosphere, look, just a passing comment, you know, I've said this before on the how-to videos, you can do pretty well do anything you want in Japan, you can pretty much, as long as you don't break the law, you can, you can do it anything you want, you can behave almost however you want, as long as you don't break the law, you can dress however you want, you can do whatever you want, basically, you know, and, and nobody's going to say anything to you, probably, as long as you don't break any rules. But, you'd think people would make a little bit of an effort when they went to the immigration centre, you know? <laughs> I was looking, every time I've been there, you know, and it's been, I don't know how long it's been, I didn't actually work it out, maybe 12 years or something, maybe more since I've been there, and it's just the same, you know, it hasn't changed, it hasn't changed, it's still the same. But, but some people look like they've, they've been partying all weekend and they've just dragged themselves out of bed. You know, the dudes there with their singlets and their, their tats hanging out and they they just look like like shit, a lot of them. You know, the guys and the and the girls, you know, midriff tops. You know, in Japan, talked about this on the fashion playlist years ago, in Japan, short skirts are pretty common and shorts and things and showing lots of leg. But showing boobies, you don't see a lot of boobies in Japan, usually. I mean, if you go to a nightclub in Tokyo, you will. But just in day-to-day -day life in Japan, you know, Boobies aren't a thing that you throw around in Japan. Usually they're sort of pretty well covered up and, you know, and midriff tops with the belly button hanging out, you know. You go to the beach or you go to a nightclub, you might see it. But in day-to-day -day life, like in an office like that, usually you don't see that sort of thing. And there's like, there's tattoos and midriff tops and, and boobies and it's, it looks like some sort of wild, you know, the morning after a wild night out or something, you know. And it's just, I mean, you can do it. You can do it, but it just, oh, it's like cringy, cringy AF, as they say, right? <laughs> Super cringy, it's like, what are you doing, you know? Anyway, that's just a passing comment, but all those things combined, you know, you're sitting there in that atmosphere, you know, usually when you go to an office or a, some bureaucracy or a bank or a post office in Japan, you don't see any of that, you know? And you go to that place and it's just everywhere. And again, those of you who have missed the previous videos about tattoos, one of my dearest friends, who's been a friend since I was four years old, is covered in tattoos, right? He's heavily, heavily tattooed down to his wrist and, you know, back and front. And He's covered in art, right? He's covered in art. And I love that guy and I admire his tattoos because he's got some beautiful ones. But when that guy came to visit me in Japan, I told him, I told him about the tattoo thing and about how it's perceived by lots of people here. And so he wore long sleeve shirts <clears throat> and covered up his tats because, you know, he didn't want to make people uncomfortable, he didn't want to stand out, and he just wanted to blend in, right? And again, you've got a choice. 
you got a choice, you know, I know, I've seen, you know, people have sent me videos on YouTube and said, what do you think of this? And, you know, here's Tokyo Timmy, you know, with his singlet top and his tats hanging out and he's in a shrine in Tokyo. Hey, hey, what, what do they always say? Hey, what's up? What's up? I'm at this shrine in Tokyo, you know, there's the top of their voice. <laughs> oh, that's really cool, you know, and you can sort of see the Japanese people walk past in the background, sort of uh, looking over, what, 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 what the... <laughs> And again, again, you can do that, okay? You can do that. But, but, this, the, the way, the way we see it and, and this channel is just, it's putting another perspective on it. You know, yes, you've got a choice. You can do that or you can not do that, you know? And the whole tattoo thing, that's another video. If you search on our channel page, if you search tattoo, you'll, you'll get a whole video on that topic. So, anyway, I'm going to focus more on driving the car because this is really crappy around here. It really is. So, um, that's enough about that anyway. So, yeah, basically, short story, if you go to the immigration center in Japan, bring your patience <laughs> and a positive mental attitude, you know. I mean, it was, I was successful. At the end of it, I walked out. I had my form properly completed. At the end of it, I walked out with my... my foreigner card again if you want to see the foreigner card search gaijin card or just card on the wet on the channel page and you'll see the, the card and the whole explanation um and it that it's a seven year thing so i won't have to go back to that place for seven years happily enough <laughs> pretty happy about that let me tell you pretty happy about that so anyway all good more videos coming soon <laughs>